Hello everyone, Van Gel here. Today, coming at you with a guest over the topic of why power is or isn't important in our society. And I'm going to go ahead and welcome our guest here. How would you like the internet to address you? Um, hello, my name is Brandon. Okay. <laughs> All right, with that said, why is power important or why it isn't? I'll go ahead and give a couple of thoughts real quick and then I'll shift over to you. So I have a general idea when it comes to making sure that one is warding off depression by checking three main categories or the three pillars as I, I like to call them. There's purpose, progress, and power. So we're going to go over power today because that one can sound a little silly at first because we generally think of power as in a negative light. However, I'll start off by saying when a person is treated in such a way by Many people talk down upon, treated like garbage. That person clearly doesn't have a lot of power. Therefore, it makes sense that depression would inevitably set in them if they don't have power by not having control over themselves and wherever they're going. you have any thoughts on this? <clears throat> well... I'm not sure um, what constitutes <clears throat> power in the light of depression, but I do know from firsthand experience that feeling powerless can lead to depression for sure, but not all roads from that can lead to depression. I feel like a good way to try and avoid that is to help others. And that should help the person um, avoid feeling powerless when they're able to help others. Yeah, that makes sense because <clears throat> from what I was telling you earlier about today that we're about to mention right now, when <clears throat> do you agree at, along with me that it's a lot easier for people to feel powerful by knocking other people down rather than building other people up? Yes, uh, I think that <clears throat> it's much easier to take people down a peg than it is to try and help them reinforce themselves. Yeah, because <clears throat> we see this a lot in like middle management as well as, I guess, in some school scenarios would possibly be a place to... Any other ones that you could really think of off the top of your head? Um, work environment, school, and perhaps uh, when it comes to like uh, business or uh, just having an, an overwhelming expertise can also make one feel powerful. Like if you know you're the only one qualified <laughs> to do something, it can make you feel very powerful. Oh, yeah. But uh, let's see. So let's go over what we were talking about with the <clears throat> differentiating when feeling powerful with taking somebody down versus building other people up. Now that we're talking about that, everyone listening is probably thinking, well, if I had the choice between the two, I would obviously choose the good one where I'm building people up, right? Well, it's a lot easier said than done because when we're in a very mentally vulnerable state, it's a lot easier to tell someone they're a piece of shit or something like that rather than trying to ask people and try to probe them or even just trying to read their body language and seeing what they may or may not need 
in the moment and going through that effort of trying to find out a way to help someone because a lot of people they get in that state where they don't want help or they don't feel like they need help but going that extra mile again is a lot easier said than done of trying to just go out there and help people which is why I think is a lot harder for people to get in that mindset of helping people to feel powerful because I've from my past I've done through form of projection because I've had other people treat me in such a way where they've put me down a peg and me being the jerk I was back in the past I've done that to not a lot of people but the few people that I've done it to in that moment it makes me feel powerful but then of course later you feel like you're garbage because <laughs> you effectively are garbage however turn today when my focus is on helping people and trying to tease out their true strength that makes me feel powerful while also making them feel powerful so it was a win-win so of course when we think about it off the top of our head it makes sense to pick the going for the good as opposed to tearing people down to feel powerful but that's my take on why I think it's easier said than done what are your thoughts on those two paths so for me personally I think that helping others it should be the goal of anyone really uh, not just people in power but your fellow man you know you should want to help everyone around you because it does only help yourself when you're helping everyone else be the best that they can be if you are more focused on power for the sake of power then there's not really I don't want to say there's no purpose to your life but I feel like humans could make much more progress if we all work together more frequently than we do now you know with the the current political climate and the <laughs> lots of conflicts going on right now in the world uh, we're not I don't particularly feel we're on the right track uh, when it comes to power, it it is important that some people have more power than others. Now, I when I say that, I don't mean like, oh, you know, the big business, they need all the power and the little guy doesn't need anything. It should be that people of with good leadership skills should be in charge of ha having more responsibilities than people with not so great leadership skills. It's some, it's, I don't want to say it's something you're born with, but it can be learned, but it, it, it's, it's charisma, you know. It, it, they, people who have a vision that's easy to see is easy to get behind. You may be uh, very tactically mindset and you might have a, a good plan, but not being able to communicate your in-depth uh, decisions and or argue you know why is going to deter you from becoming a leader because you're unable to come across with your ideas easily whereas somebody who ha has a higher disposition to to uh, uh, talk about their, their their plan and their way forward will have a much easier time uh, directing you know more people and I think that's a good thing because if more people have uh, if more people have power that need it, then it's going to be better off for most of humanity in the long run if the people who can talk about it are much better at it. All right, there's a couple things that we've gone over recently, just now <clears throat> and a little earlier that. On surface sounds like it makes sense but we may want to unpack some of them like we know about good charisma <laughs> makes good leader what is a good leader as well as the, the power of who deserves it or something like that <coughs> I was excuse me I was saying uh, people who can articulate their ideas much more clearly and are easier to get behind will be much easier to follow 
than someone who is less articulate in their ability right, to right. control or maintain their plan or able to argue their point. Yeah, and then also going back to what we were saying earlier about trying to do good to help people, I do want to go ahead and unpack that real quick, at least on my thoughts. That way it's not one of these things where you, you see it at the surface, but then it's kind of hard to dig deep. When I say like to help people, and, and I'm sure Brandon probably means this too, you can elaborate shortly, but... Like it can doesn't have to be just like going out and trying to save someone from getting run over by a car or something. It's the little things we're talking about. Like we're talking about just saying hi, how was your day, and more specifically building on those, such as asking a person like how they're truly feeling in in the moment. Is especially if you can start picking up on certain body language. That way you can say, hey, hey, you look a little stressed right now. What, what's going on? Come on. You can tell me or something. Is helping people can go a lot deeper. But at, at the very least, you want to make sure to prioritize the idea of helping a person. That way you can also give yourself that sense of validation for yourself and others any thoughts on the unpacking doing good for people i find that when you help others you're mainly actually helping yourself it's impossible to be purely outward in your your outlook um i know from personal experience when i receive help i feel less than as if I was helping someone else. And I think that you're supposed to feel that way because it incentivizes you to return the favor, as it were. Right. Um, but in terms of... Uh, I'm sorry, I lost my chain of thought. It's all good. We can come back to that later in that case. But yeah, the idea of getting that little chain reaction, the positive chain reaction going for doing good because we see the opposite of this a lot where let's say someone at work is really negative they start talking about how oh this job sucks so oh, i shouldn't i don't want to be here and things like this you notice a mood in the room when you start seeing and hearing people talk like this however the opposite is also true when you're doing good for other people and setting a positive environment of like even just the simple idea of saying and yelling out, especially with a little extra gusto, we're all going to have an incredible day today. Just starting that chain of positive emotion goes a long way for everybody to giving a positive atmosphere because everyone likes that positive atmosphere as such is important whenever we're able to to make sure and contribute to that and I know there are some people where you're afraid to I used to be like this and even in some environments today am do you get in those situations where I'm afraid to do something like that because there's some really negative people that are that negative where if you're trying to set that positive atmosphere they go what are you so happy about and they just completely deflate the mood of the room and that's horrible to hear that there are people like that but it's up to us if we want a more positive environment especially in the world around us to at least in small increments to contribute in that such way of trying to push the positive energy because when you push for the positive energy, you're going to start finding the people who are negative energy and learning to try to deter them away and or find a more positive environment and welcoming of your positive attitude in a different environment entirely. I actually have a, a different theory on that. 
So I struggle with anxiety and depression, and when mm-hmm. people are aggressively positive, oh, yeah. it can force, it can have the opposite effect, a desired effect on the individual. So when people are overbearingly positive, it makes, you know, me personally feel a little bit, um, uh, it raises my anxiety because now our people have an expectation from me. They, uh, they want me to conform to their social standards. And personally, I prefer a mood of neutrality, but with positive intent. So, okay. It is the, I like a work environment or any environment to really be kind of neutral, but you have a little bit of that drive to be positive. When it's overbearing for me, I, yeah, I, I it reflects that. negatively on my own personal uh, views. But when it when it's more neutral, I feel more comfortable to be relatively positive. And uh, I've always been um, I, I enjoy getting work done that needs to be get that needs to get done. Um, you get a, a a certain level of satisfaction when you accomplish you know small goals here and there, but um, I've never been in a work environment that was overwhelmingly positive. Oh, but I have. <laughs> I, I know that uh, it would negatively affect me, and I would be I would feel very discouraged because of the overwhelming positivity. I know that doesn't make a whole bunch of sense, but it does uh, to me, and I'll try to unpack why. Did you have any other points you want to cover? No, go ahead. All right, is. There were two in work environments that are exactly what you're describing, so I'm glad you did bring that up, of comparing a neutral positive to an overwhelmingly positive. And I don't quite know yet specifically why it is. Like when I went to Primerica, and I think the other one was called diamond era resources or something like that where they would have these huddles i guess you could call them and there would be like so much yelling like you're in in a high school football game or something like that that was too strenuous for me too much uh, stimulation for me now I don't know why that is specifically. The only thing I can think of is just I didn't really get to assimilate into that appropriately. And what I mean by that is I was coming from a more combination of somewhat negative to neutral work environments to this all of a sudden overwhelmingly positive. And I think it's just that massive jump in difference in emotion going on and stimulation that probably caused that to where maybe if I was slowly progressively led into that maybe I would have taken it better but yeah that's I can see why it would be overwhelming to have an overwhelmingly positive environment well the intent is positive it's just the difference in such a short period of time between yeah. the if you're old, a, yes. Yeah, if you're a new employee and you get employed somewhere with a very extremely positive outlook and attitude, you are more or less required to inherit that level of positivity right. almost overnight in order to mesh better with your uh, colleagues. Oh, yeah. Um, the same can be said about negative work environments. If, if you get a, a, a job or you go to school somewhere and the club or uh, people you're around are overwhelmingly negative, that will also lead to you becoming more negative in the long run. So we all have this effect on each other, uh, whether we know it or not, where the group's kind of emotional state can be gauged like that. Uh you're if you join a negative group you're more likely to become yes. more negative if you join Absolutely. a positive group you're more likely to become more positive it's it's kind of interesting how a, a human yeah a human can adapt to those kind of situations yes absolutely and uh, i want to close this part uh not not the video i'm talking about like this segment about what we're talking about with 
when you're trying to choose your environment, yes, it's possible that if it's overly positive, maybe not aim for that type of environment. But at the very least, you probably want to try to aim for what Brandon was saying about the neutral positive. Yeah, a good, and a I, good baseline yeah. with, a, with positivity reinforced. And I think the best way to give an example of that is, like, let's say you're at your workplace, you're busting your butt, cleaning all over the place, mopping the floors, sweeping, not in that order, probably, the cleaning the grills, uh, things like that. In the normal working environment, you probably don't hear anything. But in this neutral positive, your crew, either while you're doing this or right after you've done it, will give you some positive affirmation, validation of your existence of you did a good job and there's going to be some intent behind that that's going to boost you. Whereas if someone says, just says, good job, there's no emotion behind that. But if someone says, buddy, Brandon, you did a damn good job. You've cleaned all that stuff that I, nobody's done for weeks or months even. Then when you get feedback like that, that validates your existence. It makes you feel good. And it in turn makes you want to pay back the positive favor you just got, which in turn makes a self-building work environment in that particular case like the transfer of power <clears throat> yeah so, it's like those small things they yeah. matter they're giving you the power <clears throat> to give somebody else the power so yeah. we can all in a sense pass the baton yes absolutely and now i want to go back to <clears throat> and delve into when we're talking about leadership because we know about charisma we all want a good leader and in those, it's important that we try to define those as best we can. That way, everyone else, because everybody, I would imagine, wants that. Then, anything off the top of your head, one, what a good leader truly is? Because that is hard to think about. Is it is difficult to think about what a good leader is? Because yes, in most of my life, lot. I've seen a bad, a lot of bad. I'll yes. tell you what a, a bad leader is first. <laughs> A bad leader is someone who doesn't affirm any positive actions taken outside of your role. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? An example would be uh, no one has done X for Y amount of time and you really need X done because you have a deadline. So you take it upon yourself and do X. Now, the bad leader will come in and reprimand you for doing something you weren't supposed to do because they're you know the person is off right now they, they're the person who does this you don't need to be doing this and then you try to argue and say well i needed it done because of the deadline you gave me so i had to do it myself and a bad leader will get angry at you taking the initiative to get things going and oh, finished yeah. <laughs> whereas a good leader would i would assume do the opposite and say hey thank you for taking the initiative i know that such and such has been off work for a little while, so I do appreciate you stepping in and fixing that and, and doing that for us. You know, that's what you would expect yeah. a good leader to do. Uh, I'm, I don't... A good leader, in my eyes, would be charismatic and cares about their employees, not only their well-being, but uh, their, their mental well-being and uh, promoting a good work environment. Um, it, it's just so hard to come across now because you need you, a, a good leader does need a level of negativity, a healthy level of negativity. And the reason why I say that is because they're in charge because they're able to weigh the ups and the downs of certain things. So you might have something that you have to be negative about because it's only beneficial to be negative about it. Now, I can't give an example about that, but of uh, in real quick when you say that I'm assuming you're probably talking about is those moments of the leader being assertive and it's just being received as negative but it's necessary negative. yes like necessary negativity <clears throat> for example like, hey, move it. you're not qualified to use this chainsaw and you go out and you do the thing <laughs> yeah. with the chainsaw oh. you're probably going to get a stern talking to yeah. because you're cutting not even a, qualified to a use cutting a watermelon with a chainsaw or yeah, something you're, like you're that you're not you're not qualified they're going to tell you no yeah, yeah no you shouldn't have done that that was a safety hazard. You're yeah. in trouble. There's a perfect example right there. I guess so, yeah. yeah. So 
but it's a silly example, but it's an example. Yeah, it, it could be any, you could insert anything there, like oh, you weren't qualified to go in and change government documentation. Yeah, like, well, that yeah, obviously you're going to get a stern yeah. talking to and so probably reprimanded. So I think what you're talking about is the them being negative is actually them being assertive. But it's easy for us to perceive, work, yeah, yeah, for the workers to perceive it as negative, or what some would say being mean. But it's necessary because if they don't, then some people yeah, they're you're gonna have liable. hooligans everywhere yeah. in your work environment. Yeah, you don't you, want that. You don't want your you, you want, want your boss to be responsible for yes. his workers, but you don't want all of the workers to take advantage of the oh, fact. Right, right. So y- you need you need someone who is stern, and so I. I I, yeah, I don't. I guess it's not negativity, but it, it's just the ability to be stern yeah, when you need to be perceived. stern. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, now, if you, if your boss gets angry at you for some, or or your school gets angry at you for doing something outside of your realm of expertise, um, and you're reprimanded for it, and you don't understand why because you perceive what you did as a good thing, you could probably try right. to argue the point and and ask, you know, what, why did what I why is it that it was negative for me to do what I have done to progress, you know, your goals on, on this project? Could you yeah. please explain to me, you know, learning is never a bad thing. You can always learn, like, why it was negative or why it you're taking away something else from something else. Yeah. It's important to learn, like, simple things like, oh, you didn't need to vacuum because the guy's coming next Tuesday to vacuum. And, and if you say, well... I just wanted to vacuum it because it needed to be done. It was very bad. Yeah, and I like was, that yeah. you brought that particular subject up because that, I think, is something very important for us and it's something that I've also been working on because we've, probably everybody listening to this, I would imagine, or at least most of us, have been in a situation where we did something and in the moment we did it fully with the idea of we think, oh, this I'm doing because I'm I'm helping and then a few moments later your boss yells at you and says why the heck are you doing this you're not supposed to be doing this or something along those lines and then if your default response is no response or you submissive in some manner where you're taking defeat in that case and not defending yourself then that's the hard part there is learning when to stand up for when you've done something right, and at least in your eyes, to see how they perceive it. Because if you don't try to at least argue the point, then you've chosen that you have made it that they are right and you're wrong, and you're going to punish yourself for having done something that was probably right, especially if you had chosen to say, hey, I did this because it had to be done, or I'll use an example I had in a work environment where there was a loose hanging tree limb in front of the building. The While they did put in a notice for it to get done, there's been a history of either it never getting done of things like this, or it having the like the tree limb falling well before it gets taken down so me being the person to try to take the initiative and get it done while normally probably not a good idea i've done this before so i went ahead and there there was no vehicles or anything under this tree limb for a good like 15 yards or more so I went ahead and just cut off little segment of the branch that was hanging and that was done was done right then right there it happened to be my boss was watching he's like what the heck are you doing I'm I'm cutting this off and the people on the other side the other building where it was kind of dangling they thanked me for it because they were afraid it was gonna fall on the little puppies because there's been many times when They've put in an order and it never gets done. Too late when the tree limb falls. And luckily what hasn't happened was those limbs in the past falling on vehicles. Luckily that never happened. But I wanted to make sure it never happened. So I made sure to do it when the moment could be done 
with no casualties of any kind or no repercussions really because I knew exactly what I was doing that's my take on that so that is entirely up to the individual on if you want to take that but I do want to make sure that everyone's aware when you're doing that be prepared to take the consequences in full because it is always worth it for doing what is the right thing at least that's how I take it what do you think I think that within reason right you should be able to take action outside of your post you should be able to take the initiative and do things here and there yes. that need to be done <clears throat> yeah that's I'll stop you real quick because one thing I just remembered now that you said that was the reason I do things like that is I weigh the results on what could have happened if I didn't do it versus what could have happened if I did is if I didn't do that and it fell and hurt somebody that was on me because I could have done something about it and now I can't go back whereas if I do it in what I believe in the safe moment and it bites me in the butt that's the consequences I have to live with whereas I'd rather live with the consequences of what I have done than the consequences of what I haven't going back to what I was saying the point I was trying to make is you should be mm -hmm. able to, to work outside of what you're expected to do but you shouldn't have to take the drastic approach right what i mean by Absolutely. that is if your co-worker <laughs> or your fellow study partner or whatever the situation might call for is not pulling their weight mm. is not doing what they're supposed to do and so if you feel like you feel obligated to do what you're supposed to do and what they're supposed to do just and then you get in trouble you have to bring up the fact that your co-worker yes. or your study partner wasn't pulling their weight and you know it's it they need to have action taken against them to ensure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing how many times you know has everyone here uh, gone into work and they don't even bring in their phone to work i'm the kind of person who if i could i would just leave my phone at home because you know i'm at work i'm at work i want to work i want to provide what i'm supposed to do to, for the company or you know myself or if i'm self-employed or something like that i want to get things done and it always ticks me off when I see someone instead of doing being more productive in their employment or in their studies they're just on their phone just head down in their own little world and you know in the back of my mind I'm thinking hey you're on somebody <laughs> else's time right now you could there's so many things you could be doing you could be cleaning the grill you could be you know taking out the trash you could be asking customers if they need any help or if they've got everything they need you there, there there's an infinite list of things you could be doing instead of being on your phone uh when I, as a customer when you go in somewhere and you're expecting service and they're just on their phone do you do you do you like oh that good for them they're doing nothing great i love it i love that my time is being valued no nobody has that reaction if you do have that reaction you have much bigger problems oh yeah but you want to see people you know pulling their weight you 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 want to you want to walk into a place and i'm not saying everybody needs to be running around with their head cut off doing as many tasks as possible but there should be a certain level of uh, of work going on. I understand downtime. Initiative. Yeah, the, the certain level of initiative. There, I understand that there are downtimes. There there are times when you're employed or, you know, and, and it's it's a, like for example, if you only work, you know, if you're employed somewhere and and 99% of the year is there's no there's nothing really going on. Sure, I, I suppose under certain circumstances you could you know take the day off or as long as you're not being paid for doing nothing you should always be attempting to do something i remember back in the day i used to work at walgreens and i would get yelled at when i wasn't doing nothing and i found <laughs> that to be odd so we would have periods of downtime between 1 p.m and and 2 30 um 
1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m., there was pretty much nothing to do. And I don't mean like, there's just, there's no one in the store. There's no one, there's no customers. This was a very regular thing. Uh, I would always try and find something to do, either rearranging the candy bars or uh, making, taking a uh, check of the cigarettes, making sure we're all, you know, keeping the count up and everything like that and making sure we all got, we've got enough batteries in the side area. And, and my boss would come by sometimes and say, hey, what are you doing? You're supposed to be behind that counter. And I'm just thinking to myself, there's no one here. And if there was, I would go behind the counter and help them, you know, check out. But this was a time when back in 2007 2000 to 2009, you know, so it was I didn't have a phone. I wasn't back there on my phone or anything. I didn't even have a phone. Um, so I, I just found it odd that he just wanted me to be standing behind the counter doing practically nothing. All I could really do behind there was just listen to the music and the pain of my feet as I stand perfectly still. So I, it, it ended up not working out because uh, I, I, was, I was fired for being too helpful and uh, that, that put a bad taste in my mouth for, for most company jobs. Um, you know, when, when customers compliment you on how, like, how well you're performing and you always get the uh, employee of the month award or something like that, but then your boss ends up firing you because, you know, you make him look bad. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's not a good work environment. I, no. I, I, I understand that people bring their emotional baggage to work, and it's hard not to in some cases, especially if you're going through something particularly difficult, but he might have been going through something at home or in his personal life that was affecting his work environment um, you know, and I was just a kid, and so it, it, we all take out our frustrations on others, even if we don't mean to. Right. It's it's something intrinsic to most of us where we we can, yeah. It's called snapping. You know, you turn to someone, you ah, well, why are you blah blah? You know, you you get real angry at them for for no apparent really good reason, um, especially if they're just trying to help or something. Uh, it's it's natural. We we all we all need our personal space, and it's it's hard to step back and say, if you're going to talk to me about this subject, I might be aggressive about it. Um, I'm just not receptive to that right now because I'm I'm dealing with some other issues, and it's hard to open up and say those kind of things oh, yeah. to people, because you know, as a especially as a as a man, you're expected to be. <laughs> You know, oh, you're the strong man. You can handle any Bottle kind of... Bottle it all up. Yeah, just take all your emotions and put them in a box, and then one day you'll die. But uh, that's not a good way to deal with it, and it's just hard to convey, you know, things like that, especially if someone has a history of alcohol abuse or drug abuse. Oh, goodness, yeah. It, yeah, it, it can only escalate the problem. So it, it is difficult to have those little one-on-one conversations and be truthful with one another. Uh we all, at the end of the day, I feel like no human sets out to be evil or be aggressive or things like that. I don't, I, Everyone's I, a hero in their own story. Yeah, I my my only real note is like I I, I don't think anybody wants those kinds of things. Like it, it may have been a series of dis- bad decisions that have led you to become that kind of a person, like a bad to person, a worse, yeah, to a worse version of yourself. Yeah. But you should always be able to step back and take a deep breath and, and kind of look back over the hill that you've walked so far and say to yourself, you know, I made some bad decisions and it doesn't hurt to be introspective every once in a while and really, you know, take yourself into consideration, look at yourself kind of objectively. It, it's hard to do that because, you know, we all, yeah, like Brian was saying, we all feel like we are uh, inclined to you know we're we're the protagonist you know we try to do everything and it's hard to stop and and look back yeah i can fully agree with that is the paths that we're going it is really hard to actually look at where we are without it just being from like i think the best way to see that is and i think this is a quality for what can be the ultimate quality for a good leader 
which is seeing the results of who you are. Example, let's say you get a lot of people who look like they're miserable all the time when they're around you specifically and they maybe wonder like why is everybody so negative and I know you, there are some people out there who wonder why the world is such a bad place or something they say something like that but when it is hard to actually look at the whole world but ultimately if a person can see what is going on around them specifically because like if if the whole world seems like it's bad there is a possibility of hey maybe there's something i'm doing wrong and that's a hard step to make is asking yourself am i doing something wrong and taking those moments to try something different wait by doing that for a couple weeks even sometimes sometimes it takes months to see the results and see what happens differently if any at all if the answer is something happens differently then that might be the course to do is maybe try something different because a lot of what we view is because this is what I used to be like in the past is I viewed the whole world as like this bad place everything's wrong and everything's unfair but ultimately after getting so many bad results results that I don't want I have to make the decision and finally made the decision I'm gonna do something different maybe I wanna try to build people up or something like just do something different from what your normal routine is and seeing how that plays out planting it's like the analogy I like to say is the seeds and plants you're gonna grow are gonna be based off of the seeds you put out if you keep putting out shit plants and planting shit plants you're going to grow shit plants. You're not going to grow flowers. So it's important to see like if you're getting completely undesirable results with where you are at life, then it's important to look at oneself and do something different. Anything is as long as you're doing something different, you're doing one more thing than you than somebody would, else who's yeah, not doing that. absolutely. Is that's a hard step to make is to tell yourself, I'm doing something wrong, so I'm gonna do something different to see what happens now and see if I can get closer to the result I want. Now this ties into power. Oh because yeah, because absolutely it ties into power because <clears throat> you're you're taking that an initiative you're taking the power to change how you view things. That's how it ties into power. The same thing can be said for not taking the initiative. You're just, mm -hmm. you're being, you're not being receptive to the idea that you might be wrong or what you're doing is right and you're right because you know you're right. No one's infallible. <laughs> um, it's always good to look back and ask and, and, and look for guidance if you need it. And most people do need guidance or a step in the right direction. You know, no one likes to admit that they need help. It, it, it does, personally for me, admitting that I need help is, is very painful, but it's a necessary pain because it can help me help others in the future. 100%, yes. So it looks like we covered all the points that I wanted to make sure that we elaborated on. Are there any closing comments you have over power? My closing comments over power are no power or can, can, can absolute power corrupts absolutely. So it's better to realize where you stand on that scale 
you don't want to be at the point to where you feel invincible. That's oh, ego. Good. Yeah, yeah you, that, that's that's a step in the wrong direction. You want to be. You want to have enough power to help others have power, because it'll only help the human race as a whole. If everybody feel is having a good time and enjoying the party, no one's gonna shit in the punch. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. My thoughts on that is, if I want to make sure that I have enough power, at least in one particular environment, to feel powerful. But I also want to have an other environment where I don't feel like I'm very powerful. That way, in that environment, there's room for me to grow. Whereas if there's no room to grow, in other words, absolute power, then there's all oh, so many things that I could do wrong and mess up. Because there's no room for growth, so I'm not going to have a very good existence, very positive existence most likely, but maybe I'm wrong. But that's just my take on that is I like to make sure that there's an, at least one environment where I have myself feeling powerful and at least one other environment where I'm not completely powerful that way. There's room for growth. Yes, I think a good balance is important. Uh a good there there can't be yeah. any good without evil because every action wouldn't mm-hmm. be good if there was no evil. Yep. So there there's there's always gonna be some sort of balance and, and attaining that is really really difficult. Hard, yes. Yeah. It, it is probably one of the hardest mm-hmm. things you can do is to maintain a equilibrium balance. of sort. Yeah. So for me I struggled talking to people, doing public things and that's just that's a, a big challenge for me and I try to do as good as I can and I can only handle so much just because of how I am uh, but it can always be improved upon and I know it can be improved upon so I always try to push myself a little bit more in social situations to be a little bit more uh, receptive to that kind of change uh, it, it's it's a big challenge but you know most people I think can handle uh, aren't like me, you know, and, and they can handle uh, uh, social interactions and problems. And you should always, uh, you should never take on more than you can handle. So that my takeaway is have enough power to where you feel comfortable helping others. And I think that will overall lead to a fulfilling life. That's my final thought. Very good. All right. Uh, with wrapping up power, uh, final takeaway I want to make sure everybody gets at least take home from this is if you're feeling powerless best thing if you can make sure just do whatever you can to put a smile on another person's face because that's all the power you need to get yourself in the direction of getting yourself the right amount of power you need because if you have the power to put a smile on somebody's face that's powerful With that said, that's all we have for the day. You all have a good one.